Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. I'm Andrei Shchetnikov, and right now we're going to do an experiment that one of our subscribers reminded us about. And it goes like this. Here I have a suspended chain. I'm calming it down. And along with the end of the chain, I'm holding a steel ball in my hand. Let's wait until the chain settles down. And now I take and release them at the same time. The ball and the end of the chain? And more, well, they fall down. Well, actually, all of this happens very quickly. And it's better for us to look at this experiment in slow motion. I release the chain and the ball. And at first, the end of the chain and the ball fall next to each other. But then the end of the chain moves ahead. And that means it's moving with an acceleration greater than the acceleration due to gravity. Let's take a look at the frame at the moment when the chain is fully straightened. If we denote the length of the chain as L, then at this moment the ball has traveled a distance. 0.3 Let's remember its number. In the experiment, I release the ball and the end of the chain with my hand. And as our young physicist friends like to say, to eliminate the human factor, I conducted a control experiment in the Algudu program. Here, the ball and the chain fall down. First they go together, and then the end of the chain also goes forward. And in the freeze frame we see that the path traveled by the ball is again 70 three hundredths of the length, straightening out, and the chain. Thus, the results of the computer simulation match the results of the real experiment. We can completely trust this, and now we need to explain why. The end of the chain overtakes the ball. Where does it come from? This is an additional acceleration, and some might say that the upper end of the chain is moving down with acceleration. More so because it is affected by the weight of all the links that are below it. But, let's conduct a control experiment. I will take a shorter chain along with the ball, release them at the same time. And, in the high-speed footage, we see that the upper end of the chain is moving upward. The chain and the ball are moving side by side, neither is overtaking the other. As Galileo once said, all bodies fall, equally in the absence of significant air resistance. Well, with the same acceleration g. Therefore, if the upper end of the chain gains additional acceleration while falling, it is not directly related to the force of gravity and with some additional force that gives it this acceleration. And this force is related to the lower part of the chain and to the fact that the links which were previously falling down stop here. And to find the magnitude of this force, it will be convenient for us to perform a trick. First of all, let's imagine that a weightless back block is being lowered by the chain here. This is a regular movable block. And if the upper end of the chain, well, in general, this whole part of the chain is moving down at a certain speed. At the same time, the block is moving down at half the speed. And now let's move on to the next part of this trick. We will mm, describe everything from the perspective of an observer descending with the block. And for him, the block is stationary. And this part of the chain is rotating, going down, while this part, on the contrary, is going up. But all of this is happening at half the speed. Now let's find the force with which the chain acts on the block. Well, accordingly, the block, according to Newton's third law, acts on the chain. But all of this is happening at half the speed. Now let's find the force with which the chain acts on the block. Well, accordingly, the block acts on the chain. According to Newton's third law, it is equal to the change in momentum of the chain per unit time. So, this is the change in momentum. First of all, I need to know the mass that is rotating through the block. This mass is equal to linear density of the chain. I'll denote it as r multiplied by the speed, and the speed is v over 2. We know the mass. Well, now we need to find the momentum. Unit time. How much does our speed change? I put in v over 2. Now it's going up at v over 2. So the change in speed is equal to v. So I need to multiply this again. Well, found the force acting on the block from the chain. And this is the force acting from the block on 
both parts of the chain. And if I want to find the force acting on one half of the chain, since we're interested in this part, I need to divide it by two again. The force has been found. And now, what mass is this force acting on from the side? What mass is this force all accelerating from the block? Well, this part of the chain is at rest. I have now returned to the laboratory system. And this part is moving down. Well, its mass, accordingly, is equal. Well, I have the distance. I marked Z from the bottom of the straightened chain to the descending end. Well, accordingly, that's half of Z divided by 2. I need to take the linear density again. Multiply by R and by half of Z. Well, in the end, we were interested in the additional acceleration which this part of the chain acquires in addition to the acceleration G due to free fall. And this is the additional acceleration. I'll denote it. Ah, there's this force divided. We've now figured out this mass in physics. And then it's all just math, which I won't go into detail about right now. I'll explain, but after some too complicated but tiring transformations, we have obtained the following results. And now I have written down the differential equation of motion. Well, dz over dt is minus v. And here, dv over dt, the change in velocity, is acceleration. First of all, there is a term from the acceleration of free fall here. And secondly, the term which comes from my previous reasoning when we divide force by mass. Well, let's look at this term, at this acceleration. Let's take a look. Well, first of all, in the denominator, we have z. So how much of the chain is left to fall? And the smaller this z is, the larger this term becomes. The acceleration during the straightening of the chain approaches infinity. But moreover, there's also v squared here. And if we integrate these equations, we will get this expression for v squared. It also approaches. It also contains this term L times z. Well, which accordingly approaches infinity. As we already said, v squared is still approaching infinity. So the turn of the chain is moving faster and faster. And the mass becomes this z smaller and smaller. And from this, the final snap of the chain occurs when it straightens out very quickly. And we saw that it moves away from ball. It is precisely at the last stage of the motion. And after several integrations, that we find that the time it takes for the chain to fully straighten out is equal to the square root of L over G. And there's also a numerical coefficient of 1.198 which is about 1.2. And accordingly, during this time in free fall, the ball travels a distance of g tau squared over 2. We substitute tau here and get 0.72L. And in the experiment, as we remember, we obtained 0.73. And thus, we have achieved a wonderful... The agreement of the theory with the experiment, and as our young physicist friend said again, let's set ourselves up at this point. A little plus. Well, now we will conduct another experiment. Here at the end of the chain, I hung a small washer weighing 2.5 grams on a nylon thread. And this nylon thread, it can hold a load weighing 2.5 kilograms, which is a thousand times more. And now I set the chain in the starting position and let go. And the washer came off, breaking the thread. So there was an acceleration developed in the thousands. So, where does such a large acceleration come from? But after watching this film, you will certainly be able to explain it. And you can write your comments there, down below. YouTube, thank you. Thank you.